All of Washington actually remains on high alert right now, tonight, awaiting the delivery of the special counsel's report, which we're told could be imminent. What does imminent mean tomorrow? I don't know. Reporters staking out the special counsel's office right now captured Robert Mueller. There he is, driving to work by himself, of course. However, there's been no word as to when he will pre present his findings to the Justice Department. Despite repeatedly calling the investigation a witch hunt, however, the president yesterday said the public should see the final report. How's that for a flip? A new poll by CNN shows that the public agrees. 87%, 9 out of 10 Americans say the Mueller report should be made public. Who are these people that don't think it should be made public? However, Attorney General William Barr is not obligated to do so legally. There are, of course, questions the special counsel needs to answer. Like, was the president, through his business dealings or otherwise, compromised by Russia? Will anyone else, Donald Trump, Jr., Eric Prince, whoever, be charged with making false statements to Congress? Why did Paul Manafort share internal polling data with a Russian intelligence operative? And if the president has nothing to hide, why has he repeatedly obfuscated and misled the public with his frequent attacks on a legitimate investigation? Let's take a look. Regardless of recommendation, I was going to fire Comey, knowing there was no good time to do it. And in fact, when I decided to just do it, I said to myself, I said, you know, this Russia thing with Trump and Russia is a made-up story. I am disappointed in the attorney general. Uh, he should not have recused himself. I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. Look, Comey is a leaker and he's a liar. So very simply, Michael Cohn is lying. I never directed him to do anything wrong. Whatever he did, he did on his own. He's a lawyer. The question was asked yesterday about pardons with respect to Paul Manafort. I think they asked or whatever. Would you? I said, I'm not taking anything off the table. There should have never been a special counsel, in my opinion. It's an illegal investigation, totally. I'm joined right now by Caroline Fredrickson, president of the American Constitutional Society. Chuck Rosenberg, of course, former U.S. attorney and former senior FBI official. And David Corden, my friend, Washington bureau chief for Mother Jones. I'm going to flip these cards and go to the bottom line here. Chuck, you're great at this. Just a motivational question. If he's innocent of the main charge of collusion with the Russians, advancing a Russian conspiracy to interfere with our elections, the main threat of this thing, if he's also or also or possibly uh, as well, Guilty of obstruction of justice for all those things we just saw, firing Comey, intimidating Comey, firing Sessions, the whole works. Why do he do all that if he's innocent? Yeah, so one of the things well, we... Does that strike you as a law enforcement guy? Why does. are you acting like you did it? One of the things we struggle with in law enforcement and proving intent, right, is to get into someone's mind. The more the president talks about all the things that he didn't do and that others did to him and why this is a witch hunt and a hoax... The more it illuminates what we call consciousness of guilt. I don't know if he committed any crimes, but I know he talks a lot about uh, how everything has turned on him and against him, and it's all unfair. And to us, that's consciousness of guilt. Is that what we mean in the old detective shows about returning to the scene of the crime? Returning to what the scene drives of the, crime? the bad guy or bad person to go back to where they did the killing? You drive by the bank that you robbed over and over and over again to see if anyone's investigating the bank robbery. And so the president... Like the guy words, who starts the fire, the pyromaniac goes back and watches the fire. Well, right, returning to the scene of the crime. The president, through his words, his tweets, his actions, his conduct, seems to be really concerned about something. Did he commit a crime? I don't know. But Caroline, if he's, if he's opposing all these investigations on pure constitutional grounds, like it's wrong to question a guy... Uh, I don't think he makes a case because there's so much prima facie evidence that the Russians interfered in our election to everybody. There's so much prima facie evidence that his people were in, de were in regular dealing with Russian figures close to the Kremlin. Absolutely. There's, there's reams of evidence. Uh, but I think to add to, to Chuck's point, I think, you know, the other psychological element here, you know, whether or not Trump actually conspired directly with uh, the Russians. He wants people to think he won this election fair and square. And just like he denied that Hillary Clinton actually won the popular vote, he wants to deny that Russians might have wanted to help him and that he might have wanted their help. And so there's, a di in addition to possibly returning to the scene of the crime, there's also this sense of denial, extreme denial, that he actually didn't win the popular vote and he might have only won the electoral vote because the Russians put him over the edge. So he's still fighting with uh, Hillary Clinton? In the same way, he's still fighting with John McCain. He seems to be. These ghosts are still lingering.
We have to remember that in this scandal, which I think you can argue is the most consequential um, presidential scandal in history, he basically helped the Russians get away with the attack. Whether that's a crime or not, while they were attacking the election throughout the 2016 campaign, he kept saying it wasn't happening, even after he had received briefings that it was. So he has wants to cover up the taint, but he also wants to cover up this profound act of betrayal. He wants, to not, he wants us to forget that he lied to the American public about dealing with Putin in Russia and Putin's own office while campaigning in order to make hundreds of millions of dollars. There's so much he did that is wrong whether it's a crime or not, and we've gotten focused on the criminal side of this, which he wants, because if he can't be indicted, if he can argue the conclusion case, he doesn't have to win, he just has to make it messy. He's already done so much, though, that if we weren't living in these tribalized times of time of politics, he would have been raked over the coals and the public would have rejected him for this. I want to ask you about when Jerry Ford, who everybody liked, didn't dislike him, nobody disliked him, mm. when he pardoned Nixon, everybody like me was saying, damn it, I want to know what happens. And unless we have a trial, we'll never find what happened. Will we, Chuck, in this report, whenever it comes out tomorrow morning, next Wednesday, who knows when, will we find out the denouement? Will we get a sense of what happened with Russia, what happened with Trump? Leon Jaworski's report in Watergate, Chris, as you know, came out 40 years later. So will we ever see a report? But if it comes out, I will it be written so. to answer those questions? Well, here's the problem. You have stuff that will inevitably be in a report that we shouldn't see because it's either classified or grand jury information or, importantly, because it pertains to ongoing investigations. There's a way to handle classified information. You could redact it or declassify it. There's a way to handle grand jury information. You can get an order from a judge to disclose it. But if you have ongoing investigations, and I imagine we do in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere, that stuff should remain confidential until those investigations are over. But, but, but uh, you know, I'm just going to say that, that the one thing that they, they did have, since they didn't really have a report in Watergate, they did have a roadmap, though, mm -hmm. um, that was given to Congress to follow uh, where, what the grand jury testimony and, and the evidence told them. And the same thing could happen here. Well, you may not get much from of Jaworski, a report. Yeah from Mueller, but you may, and we already do have from the litany, the variety of indictments and prosecutions that have already taken place, there's a pretty good roadmap already for Congress to follow. Okay, in a New York Times op-ed today, I got to get to this, it's coming out tomorrow, FBI Director James Comey writes, even though I believe Mr. Trump is morally unfit to be, there's another guy who believes it, unfit to be President of the United States, I'm not rooting for Mr. Mueller to demonstrate that he is a criminal, that he's a criminal. I'm also not rooting for Mr. Mueller to clear the president. Comey says, that I am rooting for a demonstration to the world that the United States has a justice system that works because there are people who believe in it and rise above personal interest and tribalism. So I guess that's the question is, do, I don't know if I believe Comey or not. I don't yeah. think he's that pious that he doesn't <laughs> care what happens yes. here. But I did think it would be nice to know that we're a country of law. Well, there are two things here. There's the law and finding out what the heck happened. They're not the same thing. So uh, Mueller may know all. It's not his job necessary to tell all. His job is to prosecute cases and the report. I think we're hyping this. The report the, under the Justice Department guidelines, regulations, he only has to tell uh, the attorney general what his prosecutorial decisions were. Now, maybe he's going to do 5,000 pages. But Comey went beyond that with Hillary Clinton before the last that's election. That's right. He, he went it. out and said, and he, I don't like her, you know, I'm not indicting her. And he, and he, got, he got, you know, you know, reamed for that, right? But so Mueller doesn't have to do that. So the real issue is what you were talking about. Whatever Mueller presents to the Attorney General, there's still an obligation for the public to know what happened. That now will go to Congress. They can pick up on Mueller, maybe they'll get a copy of his report, but Mueller's report could literally be a dozen pages think, yeah. that tell us nothing new. It's not the end of the game here. No I one agree, can think I, agree. That. I think it's very important, just as a citizen, and I suppose commentator, I think going into the 2020 election, it'd be nice to know what happened in 2016. Absolutely. The yeah. public absolutely has a right to know if Russia, we know Russia interfered in our election. We know the president and his campaign had interactions with the Russians. We know the Russians uh, tried to directly help the campaign. Uh, you know, the public needs to know how far that went, how far up the chain, so that we can feel confident in our system yeah. of justice, yeah. but also in our system of democracy. Well, we get an asterisk in the history books 
thanks to this investigation, so we can put next to the 2016 election that little thing like Barry Bonds used drugs kind of thing. <laughs> Will there be an asterisk? Roger Maris. Yeah. Yes. yeah you know, or, uh, what's her name? Lance. What's her name? Armstrong. Armstrong. And we're going to get a little asterisk. That, yeah, he got the election, but... Well, we got enough information from Mueller to, d to have that in the history books. I think we already know from our intelligence com community's unanimous uh, analysis and opinion that we have an asterisk there, right? They can't tell us how many votes flip. They can't tell us how many people change their minds. They can tell us and they have told us that the Russians interfered in the election and to benefit President Trump. Well, we'd say Trump helped. Would. Well, let's say that Trump helped him. I, well, that, right. I'm, I'm waiting well, to see he, well, the report. He, well, he did help them by making it a, making it a political that, issue a whether data. this was happening. Well, and, <laughs> and, that's, and that's a fascinating open question that I hope Mueller answers, and I hope we get to read it. About the poll question. Yeah. Yeah, what do they want with that except to fine-tune and, and, and do the little micro-marketing of voters and the stuff we know goes on today and trashing it with the black community and people like that. It, her, rather. Mm. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.